my name is Ursula de Castro, and I'm creative director at From Somewhere. It's a small fashion label that I run with my partner, Filippo Ricci. Together, we are also co-founders and co-curators of Aesthetica at London Fashion Week. However, my career in fashion started completely accidentally. I started my label from somewhere in 1997. My background is actually in printmaking, but I just had this jumper that I loved that was covered in holes. And I just had this innate desire, first of all, to wear it, second, to save it. So I took this yarn and crochet needle, and I crocheted around every single hole and every single stain and the edge that was fraying, somehow enriching it through design. And I think that really sums up cycling up, pretty much. It's about giving something a new lease of life, adding value through design. We just need to think at food, really, to understand the power of leftovers. Some of our best dishes come from leftovers. Paella, grappa, la ribollita in Italy. Anyway, I had a very lucky start. Um, within a few months, I was selling in some of the top London stores. We were dressing celebrities and we started being picked up by very important international stores all over the world, including big department stores in Hong Kong and in New York. So I found myself with a slight challenge. I went from being the only crocheter myself to employing 13 crocheters around London. We started crocheting around jumpers and T-shirts and anything that we could find in bulk. We started off buying in our local little charity shops, and I ended up swimming in waste in huge second-hand warehouses all over Italy and the UK. However, we had a problem in sense of growing because everything came from second-hand and everything was pretty much unreproducible being second-hand and unique. And I had my moment of eureka while visiting a factory, a beautiful knitwear factory in Italy in 2001. So at that point, I was feeding maybe 50 international stockists, and I was given a tour of the factory by the Signore Edmanna, who was the head of production. And the idea was for me to collect a few cardigans and leftovers that they had to customize. And as I walked through the factory, I could see on the floor ton, hundreds of these, these are backs having gone wrong, in the most beautiful, beautiful cashmeres. Miles, the factory, produces for some of the most important designers in the world. And the Signor Edmanna were saying, oh, come on, Ursula, move away, stop digging in the bins. This is rubbish. And it wasn't rubbish to me. Um, so I just kept on, you know, patching myself uh, with, with this amazing treasure on the floor. And suddenly I saw the recognition in her eyes. And they've been waiting, they've been keeping their waste for us ever since. It equally followed that if they had waste, other manufacturers would. And in a relatively short amount of time, pretty much like a salmon swimming upstream, I just followed my waste. It just seemed that I could go further and further and I could find anything I wanted at either completely free um, or very, very cheaply, certainly much cheaper than if I were to buy it new in any quantity I wanted. And I was somehow performing a service for the factories that I was cleaning up because they could be seen as being green by giving stuff to us. And I had access to the most beautiful materials. This, for instance, that you see behind me, this is during a trip in Sri Lanka when I discovered feeder cloth. Feeder cloth is the most misunderstood rubbish in the world. It's what it's used by the machines to test that the print is right, that the color is right, and they juxtapose this print again and again and again over and over. And then they chuck it. And this is beautiful. And it's pure art for me, even though it's rubbish for most. Reclaiming the unwanted surplus from the textile industry is one of the three principles behind sustainable fashion. The other two being fair trade and ethical production and the use of man-made biodegradable materials. Upcycling and recycling stands for the reduction of landfill mass and the slowing down of unnecessary virgin textile production. Now, to a certain extent, why slow down? I mean, the textile industry is thriving. We are, DEFRA predicts that there's going to be 
a 90% uh, uh, increase in the use of fabrics between now and 2020. However, the textile industry is actually one of the most polluting industries in the world. It is estimated that 20% of all pollution that reaches our water supply comes from the textile industry. It is also estimated that in terms of landfill mass, 80% of everything that we throw away is reusable. The textile industry employs an inordinate amount of water. It takes 2,720 litres of water to make just one T-shirt. It would take us three years to drink that amount of water. Recycling is relatively common within the textile industry, by no means endemic. Recycling, I mean, I actually mean downcycling. It means the reshredding and the repulping of this type of waste, so of the offcuts and the leftovers. However, in itself, it is a process that requires transport, energy consumption, water consumption, and as I said, it's an industry, that too, that's very much lost. Upcycling, on the other hand, is about immediacy. All you need is a lot of imagination and a few sewing machines. So in that respect, it is a design solution to an environmental challenge. This is an industry where, really, time to market, speed, it's completely of the essence. Designers are designing for way more seasons that nature ever invented. You know, we're doing spring, summer, autumn, winter, resort, um, pre-collections, main line, diffusion line, and I could go on. Don't forget about the it bag, the shoes that you must have for that season, and on and on and on. And we have some estimations of what is discarded by the consumer. For instance, we know that in the UK, we are consuming approximately 1.72 million tons of brand new fabric every day. We also know that in terms of landfill, we are reusing only maybe 13% of what we're throwing away. So there is no statistic as to what is discarded by the industry. There is no statistic about those runs and runs of defected clothing or clothing that are left unsold at manufacturing level. Even less statistics as to what is discarded by the textile industry at large. So we are talking of millions of tons of fabric that can be thrown away simply for being the wrong color, including to that the fact that brand protection implies and demands that all of anything that comes out wrong should be destroyed. You see that we are really losing control in terms of disposal and production. As a designer, I have to say that upcycling is obviously very, very challenging. You might set out with an idea for a very, very colorful collection for spring-summer, as it happened when we did the Tesco clothing collection. This dress was actually really supposed to be red and orange, but, you know, there you go. All we found was black and white, so we just simply had to adapt. <laughs> um, it sold out in two weeks. Um, I once found this amazing silk jersey, beautiful, ladder all over it. I just placed the ladder somewhere pretty, and it looked like it was intentional. For the collection, the Topshop Reclaimed, collection, Reclaimed to Wear collection, for which we consulted, um, we used a jersey, it was about 15,000 meters of leftover jersey, that had lost elasticity. It had actually been bought to make leggings, but had lost elasticity. So um, the team was going, oh, that's it, gone, can't do anything with it. And I just said, well, let's drape it. So we made dresses with it. Um, Livia Firth went down the red carpet. Um, from somewhere was the first label, by the way, the first sustainable label at the Oscars. That ruffle that you see on her shoulder, that's entirely unfinished silk petticoats and underpants. <laughs> For our first Speedo collection, there you go, we used the fast skin, they had plenty in abundance after they had been banned for being too advantageous for the swimmers. So that's the first dress that we made. And actually, for our second collection, which we designed last summer, this was for the Olympics, this is what we used. These are, these are their proofs and remnants from their manufacturers in Portugal. So, can fashion be a political instrument of change? 
Alexander McQueen used to say that fashion is so indicative of our social and political climate that inevitably it becomes a symbol of our generation. So what is fashion saying about us right now? Um, I would like to bring denim as an example. Um, denim is a really miraculous fabric in the fashion industry. It's gone from workwear in the 1920s to a symbol of rebellion. It is now mankind's uniform. And um, what are we saying about our life with the denim that we have now? When I was young, I used to buy a pair of blue jeans, <laughs> sit in the bath with it. It would have paint if I painted on it, and it would tear where I tore it. Now, we are paying somebody very, very little to make it look like we have a life. And to be honest with you, just look at those pictures. What kind of a life is that? What do you need to do? I mean, to me, that's, that means I'm spilling acid over myself every day. That one, I'm wrestling with a violent dog every morning when I go to work. And don't forget the ones with lots and lots of creases. If you anatomically analyze this mass-consumed wear and tear, it's completely stupid. Those ones look like you're spending all your life with your trousers pulled down. <laughs> so, for me, the thing is that good design is about finding solution, and this is bad design creating problems. Because in order to achieve this, you're looking at more gallons of water, 11 per, to be precise for each jeans, the most incredibly harmful textiles being used, individual working at 98% humidity, and what about the fact that every UK woman possesses 10 garments of clothes in her cupboard that she never uses, 30 million worth of clothes that aren't being used? So upcycling is a solution, just one of them, integrated within. It has an enormous possibility. It has a possibility and an opportunity to be both cost-effective and time-efficient, if properly integrated within the system. If you think about it, 20 years ago, all of the factories in China, in Bangladesh, and Vietnam, they just produced. Now, they all have their own design studio and their own sampling unit. I want to see an upcycling line in all of these factories. I want to see an upcycling line which is expertly managed by a creative waste manager. That way, we can really look at resources that are going to become more and more scarce in the future and really explore new and innovative ways. Somebody before was talking about jobs for the future have not been created. Well, I'd like to create this one. And um, I've seen it take over from young designers, from Aesthetica in London to China. Young designers are looking at waste as a real opportunity, not just as a byproduct of mass consumption. I would like to leave you with a quote from Antoine de Lavoisier, the father of modern chemistry, who said, that in nature, nothing is created and nothing is destroyed, but everything is transformed. Thank you.